An aircraft carrier carries a lot of planes. And lots of planes means lots of danger all the time. Hello everyone! This time, I would like to show you what kind of dangers await pilots when they land on the flight deck. Then, please take a look at some of the dizzying and shocking accidents that have occurred on aircraft carriers. Take off into the sky! Don't stop flying. The American E-2C Hawkeye was designed to detect enemy aircraft and missiles with long-range radar. As it is mounted on an aircraft carrier, it must be able to take off from the flight deck and handle landing on the carrier. On March 18, 2016, when the E-2C Hawkeye landed on the aircraft carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower, a certain accident occurred. The Hawkeye's landing hook appeared to be successfully hooked onto the carrier's resting wire. But the wire snapped, and the rapidly decelerating plane rolled off the flight deck and almost fell into the sea. It was fortunate that the pilot was able to regain his position in the nick of time and get the aircraft back into the air. Thomas Browning, Matthew Halliwell, and Kellen Smith, three members of the crew, were awarded the Air Medal for saving an $80 million plane. But perhaps more important than that was the fact that they made it back alive. Accident on the Aircraft Carrier Saratoga Until the beginning of World War II, the aircraft carrier USS Saratoga was a training carrier for the tactical training of naval air forces by the United States. There were several accidents that occurred on this ship in 1938 to 39, which I would like to introduce here. On March 17, 1938, a Grumman F3F biplane piloted by a cadet named Lamplug was preparing to land. But the altitude was too high, and the aircraft nearly flipped over when it jumped into an emergency barricade net. Fortunately, the pilot suffered only minor bruising. On August 30, 1939, a similar accident occurred to an ensign named Envice. Please note the behavior of the crew immediately after the accident. It is interesting to see how trained people behave in these stressful situations. At the time, accidents like this were not uncommon on the Saratoga. Carrier-based aircraft was just taking its first steps, and landing on the ship was still in its rudimentary stages. Was it only biplanes with a higher center of gravity that had problems landing on ships? No, it was not. On November 16th of the same year, Major McGreevy fell into a similar pitfall with a Douglas TBD Devastator. It is hard to imagine what a tremendous strain it must have been on the pilots. What is certain is that such a profession requires a good sense of equilibrium and a sturdy stomach. The Ejection Seat That Saved Lives in the early days, pilots could no longer rely on their own luck when all else failed during a landing. Time passed, and the ejection seat was invented to rescue pilots in an emergency. How useful it was can be seen in an accident that occurred on May 9, 1970. A-7B Corsair II failed to land on the aircraft carrier Ranger and rolled off the flight deck, but the pilot reacted in the nick of time. He ejected away from the cause of the trouble. Think and jump. Steel cables of the arresting wires on which planes' hooks passed all the toughest quality inspections. Sometimes, however, even they fail to work properly. One such accident occurred on September 11, 2003, when the F 18 Hornet was about to land on the aircraft carrier George Washington. The cable broke, but the pilot, Lieutenant Rich Rivera, reacted immediately. He was able to eject before the plane crashed into the sea. But it is not only the pilot who needs to react in such cases. As you can see, the broken cable becomes a dangerous snake that bites the crew. This man had tremendous reaction speed and reflexes. He jumped the cable and then jumped over it again. Deserves to be marveled at. Not all of them, however, were able to be so attentive. It was fortunate that only a few people were injured at this time eventually. 
divers in their element. On May 19, 1956, while landing on the aircraft carrier USS Essex, a carrier-based jet fighter, Grumman F-9 Cougar, failed to hang its landing hook on the carrier's braking system. And then it rolled off the flight deck. The pilot, Commander John Desmond, realized that he was stuck in a sinking plane. A rescue operation was launched. But even the rescuers who came down from the helicopter were unable to get the pilot out of the cockpit. This is when the diver's true colors came into play. Iron Man A man named George Duncan was an experienced pilot who remained in the military as a test pilot after serving in World War II. On June 23, 1951, he was on a fighter plane, Grumman F-9F Panther, to perform test flights. When approaching the carrier Midway, the aircraft was pushed under the flight deck by a sudden gust of wind. What you are seeing on the screen was not the result of pilot error. It was the result of a lightning-quick reaction. Seeing the aircraft was below the flight deck, he quickly raised the nose and managed to slide the cockpit into the runway. Thanks to his reaction and the coordinated efforts of his crew to put out the fire and rescue their comrade, Duncan was able to return to test flights only six months later. He is truly a man of steel with an iron spirit. After the crash, he went through two more wars and rose through the ranks, even becoming the captain of an aircraft carrier. 5 out of 5 Landing on an aircraft carrier is difficult even in bright daylight, but pilots have to do it at night as well. Landing signal officer, who calmly and skillfully guides the pilot and makes sure he lands the aircraft correctly, is very reliable. His guiding voice gives the pilot confidence and his vast experience allows him to land on aircrafts, even in rough seas, darkness, and technical difficulties. On March 9, 1987, A6 Intruder suffered a landing gear failure, and that was just such a case. The pilot, Captain Rand Atlas McNally, consumed nearly all of his fuel and had no choice but to make a belly landing onto the aircraft. Meanwhile, in the carrier's control room, Commander John Bug Roach was in charge of this tough flight. He was an experienced landing signal officer and an excellent fighter pilot himself. Trust me, Commander Roach told Captain McNally. If I think you're okay, you're okay. And Commander Roach was right. The aircraft landed on the carrier safely, and the performance was 5 out of 5. Accident on the aircraft carrier Philippine Sea Do you know that all aircraft landings on aircraft carriers have been photographed? This is for training purposes and accident investigation. Thanks to this practice, several accidents that occurred on the aircraft carrier Philippine Sea in 1950 were filmed. On August 3rd of the same year, an F-4U-4B Corsair fighter jet failed to successfully hook onto the arresting wire on its landing approach. The aircraft almost stood on the propeller and rolled. A similar accident occurred on February 24th of the same year when an F-8F Bearcat carrier-based fighter failed to land on the ship. This time, however, the cockpit turned over. Also, on December 1st, a carrier-based attack aircraft, a Douglas AD-4 Sky Raider, was damaged during a combat mission. Ensign Denzel Christ was forced to make a dangerous landing. On doing so, one of the engines broke away and the aircraft was engulfed in fire. The pilot quickly assessed the situation and jumped out of the burning cockpit. After receiving medical treatment, Ensign Christ took the stick again, and for the next 38 years, he fought as a pilot. Emergency Barricades Landing hook is not the only means of stopping aircrafts on a short flight deck. American aircraft carriers have emergency barricade nets, which look like volleyball nets and catch aircrafts. After the planes are put in bird-in-a-cage situations, it is the turn of the rescue team ready and waiting. Quick and smart action is needed to prevent a fire and rescue pilots. Where did the wheels go? An emergency landing may be initiated by a failed launch from an aircraft carrier. On January 24, 1991, an A-7E Corsair II, a carrier-based attack aircraft, was about to take off from the flight deck of the aircraft carrier John F. Kennedy. In doing so, the catapult ejection shuttle damaged the left nose wheel, 
due to improper weight calculations of the aircraft. It is immediately apparent that the damage of the landing gear made landing the plane less easy. Moreover, the attack aircraft was loaded with bombs and other armaments. Very dangerous. To catch the aircraft on landing, the flight deck was covered with a special ribbon-like net, the emergency barricade net mentioned earlier. And although the plane lost its wheels, it was safely caught by the net. By the way, did the wheels roll into the sea after that? What do you think? Would you like to share your theories in the comments section? This is the last episode of this series, and this video will come to an end. Thank you for watching. Please share this video on social networking sites if you like. Let your friends know how brave the pilots were. We are sure you will enjoy the next video. Please, subscribe to our channel now so you don't miss any of our videos. It's time to say goodbye. See you again. Bye.